and so I'll give it another few seconds f for the inevitable lag. For the doom. All right, for this emergency M and M immediately before I go on vacation. Damn it. Oh, okay. I understand now. The entire W fifty six subsection is all about being struck by marine life. <laughs> I really hope that was the first line that was picked up by the recording. I, I hope, hope so, so too. too. <laughs> because W56.22 is uh, struck by Orca. The dot three two is struck by other marine mammal. So it, there's, there's specific ones for, uh, let's see, Orca, uh, Sea Lion, Dolphin, anybody else? Shark? Aquaman. You know, that's not a mammal. Aquaman's other a sea fish? mammal, right? 56.8 is contact with other non-venomous marine animals. So is that like a, like a lobster, like clawed your nipple off or something? I think, I think, let me, let me just check. I don't think that falls under any other category. I think that if a lobster does claw your nipple off, I think that's what we might use. <laughs> Thank you for finding this list, Clues. Let us never give chat context. No, never. <laughs> Should we... So we want to do this news thing. Oh, so sh I think it's too late. I think we've broken Clues now. <laughs> it's over. Okay. All right. Clues uh, is a total loss. Yes. <laughs> yes, he is. Is is he several thousand degrees? <laughs> Quite possibly. <sighs> Oh, I need to find that video and watch it again. <sighs> okay, here we go. Ow, oh, jam! Hello, everyone, and welcome to uh, an emergency episode of Monday Night Magic. This is Monday Night Magic number 626, and it is currently Thursday evening. Dun dun. Huh. It's not even Thursday night. The only nope. consistent word from the title is magic. <laughs> and, and even that, we're iffy on. Yeah, that was our weakest element. We had Monday and night down pretty solid, but yeah. now we have to rely on our weakest leg. Bad at this game. So, yeah. I'm Chewy, and uh, this way, to my immediate right is Squee. I am here. And to my far right, way over there, is Clues. Well, hello. So, yes, uh, for those of you watching live, hey, look, it's not the mana pool, and it's really early. Because Thursday night is usually when we record the mana pool. The mana pool will not be recorded live this week, obviously, because we went to the pre-release last weekend. So we have a live uh, uh, recording episode of that, which is all up and done and handled, so... Early release people should have it, and it'll go public on Sunday as usual. We're right. recording this tonight because we are not recording on Monday because I will be on vacation. It does and happen. Yeah, it, this happens apparently exactly once every year where I go drive to visit some friends. So, uh, because we're not recording on Monday and we didn't want to be 10 days behind when we do record, yeah. Squee had the idea... Should we do a quick thing tonight? And I was like, ah. <laughs> it's an unusual night when we're all actually available and it's not Monday, too. Yeah. But also, like, I've got all of my work. There will be a not a break in YouTube content while I'm gone because I've worked my ass off to get videos for every day that I'm gone to go up. And I've got the podcast done. So I was done with work. And then... Bill's like, work. we should record an episode, and I went. Work, quite frankly, but no, I meant like finished. Like I was, oh, oh, I had done like... it all. <laughs> okay, he's had enough. Yes, it's over. Before we started this, uh, this, this stream tonight, I was sitting at like thirty-eight hours of of work on Thursday afternoon. So we're tipping you over to forty. Yeah, I've been working my ass off. Got to get that, you know. 
40 hours full-time health benefits from mana pool ink so that you can be prepared in the event that you're attacked by a marine mammal it's uh, it's mana pool productions and yes my apologies <laughs> but anyway Production. anyway so the reason we're recording tonight is the the big thing the organized play changes that were dropped on us this morning but there are a couple of little things we should probably knock out first just to get them out of the way sure uh so let's see there there's a lot of nonsense going on here how about we start with uh the the easy one boom let's start with the oracle changes look at that uh teferi hero of dominaria has gotten some errata in his plus one ability draw a card at the beginning of your next end step untap two lands now we'll say untap up to two lands he now does what you thought he did before. Yes. And apparently that's due to tournament policy. Yes. Because you could not untap two lands that were untapped. So people doing this yeah. created minor rules headaches that had to be fixed. Yeah, like if you didn't have any tapped lands and you used his plus one, you had to untap two of your opponent's lands. Right. And you'd think, I mean, they did that on purpose when they made the card. I, I'm pretty sure. But you'd think at, you know, the uh, rules enforcement level where this is a problem, you'd think those people would, you know, know how to handle it. I but mean, apparently not. I could see playing this at your local store, this being a case of, oh, okay, tap on tap, tap on tap. And because it's not played at that extreme level, everyone would be like, right, and then move on with their lives. But you can't do that at big tournaments. Nope. Yeah. So we're changing the card slightly so that it works the way that you wanted it to, and we can all move on with our lives. And really, if anyone's going to be messing around with the rules slightly, it's probably going to be Teferi. True. The The problem lots of people have with this is that his minus three ability doesn't say put another target non-land permanent. They didn't, they didn't change that. Yeah. So he can still tuck himself so the god-awful blue-white control thing can still exist. Ugh. We don't know if it does or not because New Standard hasn't really started yet. So we'll... You know, we'll we'll do that later, in a couple weeks. Wait, explain that last part again. Rotation. Me. Well, no, I know that. What he <laughs> to fairy being able to tuck himself was. Remember that was the win condition for the blue eye control decks that are grindy and stupid. Yeah. And they didn't change that, so that's still. Yeah, awesome. I think I was just forgetting how he did that. It's the second ability. You're right. Yeah, cool. yeah, the minus three. Yeah. Yeah. I was looking at the minus eight, and I'm like, that doesn't work. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> what happens on days when I'm not planning on knowing how to magic? True. Uh, and also, thank you, Odin Sun, for the 16 month resub. Good lord. He's That's been here lot. for 16 months. Pretty sure Odin Sun started when subs were a thing. Quite possibly. Yeah. But anyway, so that's that. Uh, also, uh, Circu Demir Lobotomus got some changes that just... Uh, yeah, we now target a player, not a library. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, they used to say target library, now it's going to say target player's library because that was just shorthand and is, well, kind of dumb. So there Suffering you go. from too much text in the box. And got to shorten it somehow. It is oh, no. suffering. Should have used a smaller font. At the time, I remember they were really against that. Like, they had, a, like, a minimum mm -hmm. font size, and they refused to go under it, so they would do stuff like Target Library instead. Yeah, well, yeah. mistakes were made in the past with font size, so I can see why they yeah. might want to do that. So, okay, that's all the functional changes. All the comp rule changes and whatnot, there's really nothing of any consequence there. I know yeah. that because I actually read it all because I'm dumb. Ooh. Yeah. Yeah. And you um, can read it all with the link in the show notes. Yeah, you can. Uh, next up, I guess we'll just come back to this. Yeah. D so the Guilds of Ravnica Mythic Edition happened. <laughs> uh, 
available only, originally only, on HasbroToyShop.com, and they gave us a date and a time. They're like, it's going to drop unusual. at this time on this day. And everybody went, and, yes. And it didn't. And then everything went all to hell. <laughs> Best laid plans of mice, man. So, yeah, there have been many, many reports of people attempting to buy it, getting charged, and not getting a, uh, well, and then getting an error message. Those were, in several cases that I saw, refunded. Uh, or attempting to buy it, getting charged, getting a confirmation number, but no email confirmation. So they didn't actually know if they were going to get the thing that they were charged for or not. And these stories are everywhere on social they are media. Plentiful. And not a, how long did the did it did it pause? Like how long was it delayed? Like 2 hours? I don't I don't actually know because I was this was what yesterday? Yeah, this is very yeah. recent. It was was it yesterday October or was it day before? Trace, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I thought it was yesterday. Well, yesterday I I was working all literally all day and night. So I only sort of paid attention, but it was it was bad. So yeah, <laughs> there's really not much else to say. But all yeah. the people who were upset that this was that this was only being sold on Hasbro Toy Shop because Hasbro Toy Shop sucks, they were right. Hey, yeah. <laughs> it worked exactly as we expected it to. Yeah, but which is you can still barely. order it. I think question mark from uh, Channel Fireball. Yeah, for but only for pickup at a GP. Right, right. You can't order it from you them and have them ship it to you. Yeah. So. Oh, and that weird IKEA logic. Oh, also, yeah. I can't prove that it's still available. It may be sold out at Channel Fireball too. I don't know. Quite possibly, especially yeah. by the time you're listening to this. Right. Possibly, yeah. So that's that. Um, yeah. That's terrible. Uh, also yesterday. <laughs> Busy day. Yeah. Uh, this. Okay, let's see. I don't think this will show up. No, it won't. So on Reddit, there was a quick little uh, post from CFB Events. That just says, I'm just going to read the whole thing. For those of you interested in attending... Grand Prix Vancouver on December 28th to the 30th. We have an announcement, exclamation point. The format is changing from team limited to limited. Further information, along with pre-registration for the event, will be available in early November at cfbevents.com slash gpvancouver. I'm, I'm sorry, when when was this event again? Uh, this is in... December 28th through the 30th, the end of December. 28th. This Vancouver. happened on October 3rd. Just yeah. under three months before the event, you know, when people would be booking flights and right. whatnot. And uh, we'll, we'll have further details the beginning of November, you say? Yeah, yeah. early November. So, so a month from now, but two months before the event. Yeah. And then if you click on the link, there's a nice picture of what I assume is something from Vancouver like the Vancouver coast or something. And that same information that I just read from the Reddit post. I could not get to this page from the front page of Channel Fireball events yesterday. I couldn't even find this page from the front page of G uh, Channel Fireball events yesterday. You'd think that changing the format of an event within three months of it there would be a big splash page, but nope, it was a Reddit post and then this, which you have to dig to find. So, my question that I asked uh, social media is, why would they do this? Like, wh what is the benefit in changing from Team Limited to Limited less than three months out? And I heard two responses. One was... The interest was low, but pre-registration hasn't even started yet. So yeah, it's hard to gauge that. So I don't know how that would work, but the other tinfoil hat theory that I've heard is that uh, there's a supplemental product, some sort of master set or something that hasn't been announced yet 
that hasn't we don't know anything about that's going to come out in time for this and it'll be that that will be the format well wait didn't it go from team limited to limited yes so why couldn't they have just used it for the team limited if that's the case well because if they're going to do a uh a supplemental draft product like a master set then that's tuned for limited like individual limited mm. but isn't day one of a limited gp sealed anyway so what the hell difference does it make typically <laughs> i believe i believe that uh this just confirms return to kamigawa uh, but i mean so that's the tinfoil hat theory that lots of people wanted to throw at me on, on Twitter. And I'm like, that sounds really dumb. I don't think they would do that. Like, considering it's, it's October. It's less than three months out and they announced all their sets at once now. And like way, way ahead of time. And this is saying early November, are they really going to drop a master set on us with only a month's notice? That just seems off. Like that I also seems would way... recommend launching it you know at the holidays and competing with yourself and everything else for money yeah like that just just, no reason to do that that just sounds not only far-fetched but a terrible idea now the fact that it sounds like a terrible idea means it's possible that they'll do that but i just (laughs) because you know that's their track record lately it just seems highly unlikely that highly improbable that that's the case but I, no one else had a, a reason other than, well, interest must have been low. But we don't even have pre reg yet, so how how do you gauge that? How do you know that? Yeah. So, I don't know. But there you go. If you're planning on taking a team to Vancouver, you can all still go, but you're not a team anymore. Sorry. That's right. And, yeah, that was a Reddit post. And At a, least they've updated it on the page. wizard site too. They have, yeah. The uh, the GP schedule now says just limited. Limited, boom, right there. But I mean, if you'd looked at that, you know, two weeks ago and said, "Oh, okay, that is team limited, sweet." Yeah. Why would you ever go look again? But there was nothing on the wizards page about this. Nothing on, you know, Daily MTG. It was a Reddit post and a buried uh, announcement page. So, you know, that's not a good look. Now, if this was like eight, ten months away, we'd go, oh. I mean, they do that all the time. Yeah, we'd say, yeah, and we'd let you know, and people would go on with their lives. But this is is less than three months away. (laughs) So that's awful. So now, now what? It's just, oh, it's just the big news. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. The, the, the big reason news that was emergency. hiding in that Channel Fireball page you just showed. Well, no, not in that page, but yeah. No, it had an Easter egg in the top right corner. Oh, it did. Yeah. So, uh, on the uh, the stream today, the, the, what's it called? I don't even know what they call it. The weekly MTG the, stream? Not the website. Yeah, the not the website. <laughs> yeah. Uh there is or there there was a a bunch of news about 2019 scheduling, qualifying for the pro tour and a massive rebranding. Dun, dun. That just came out of left field, you know, the thing that that no one asked for or particularly wanted. But here you go. So, here's the official article about it. How do, where do we, uh, where do we even start? I say we start with the bullets at the top. Yeah, sure. So, you know how Grand Prix weekends, they're just called Grand Prix? Yes. And that Grand covers... Grand Prix, insert city name. Yeah, and that covers everything. Well, now... They're getting rebranded. Grand Prix will apply to only what was previously known as the main event. So right. the big tournament that lasts two days is the Grand Prix. But the full weekend is now called Magic Fest. 
Dun, dun, dun. Look, that was so bad the clues blinked away. Oh, he's back now. Okay. He's afraid of fests. Don't worry. Yeah, about no, it. sorry. I had to cough, and so what? I muted my mic and moved away. Your video me. went with it? Yeah, and your video it blinked did. with it. It was very strange. It did. But, uh, so, Magic Fest. Yes. Which, okay, for a long time now, Grand Prix, and I've been telling people this as a casual player myself, that GPs aren't just one big tournament. In fact, on the last episode of the Mana Pool, the, we talked about, it, it was the Casual Player's Guide to Magic Tournaments, where we talked about kitchen table players going to like their first pre-release, or going to FNM, or... F and M players going to their first Grand Prix, you know, we're trying to as you as you step up which events you're going to, what to expect, and how to prepare. And we said GPs aren't just a big tournament where you're trying to win lots of money and prepare for a pro or, and qualify for a pro tour. There's all this other stuff going on, but calling it Grand Prix, sure, it sounds like it's just a tournament and that's it. Yeah, I and, mean, the last several GPs that we went to, we didn't play. I mean, yeah, I, I when I went to GPs, it was to work mainly, but... And, like, I just had fun hanging out with people. Yeah, and Bill went to socialize. Or, I, sorry, I treated it like a convention. Yeah, which is sort of kind of what they are, kind of. Yeah. yeah. But they're, they're conventions where most people are playing some sort of, some flavor of magic. Yeah. So they've decided to rebrand that into Magic Fest. Is a weird name. Okay, so right, that's my that's my point. It's a little weird. I mean, it reminds me of like Kami Fest, which is what they have, you know, comic festivals in Japan, or you know, Oktoberfest, which is not at all what they want us to compare it to, but I just did, or any number of other things. Like the word gathering is in the game name. You could probably find a way to work with that word instead. But here we are. Yeah, I don't want to like you know armchair quarterback the whole name thing here surely they workshopped this they thought about this but this Dude, i've been in naming branding meetings this is bad this is what they came up with <laughs> um, this is I, what I, I also do. want to know is it two words or is it one word with two different capital letters uh it's that one word with two capital it's, letters. it's the one word with two capital letters yeah it's compounded that is a lot of how you do branding now yeah okay it makes it easier to trademark it does, yeah. That and the word fest by itself isn't really much of a word, so. Let people know that you're a Shakespearean clown. See, I think of lobster fest. Also valid. But just because we've been talking about sea creatures before the show started, I'm sorry, That's go on. That's true, yeah. And I don't and I don't eat seafood, so I didn't even think of lobster fest. But th yeah, isn't that going I, on right now? Uh, either. I, it might, I know, because, I think shrimp fest is going on right oh, now. I know, I've seen also, commercials also for known something as like that. Crustacean annihilation. So okay, everyone is so bad at naming things. Um, back, back to the news. But yeah, so essentially this is their way of sending the signal of you can go to these events and do stuff even if you're not planning on playing in the big turn. Yes. They will have content outside of that. And they've like the list here includes, you know, side events, artists, panels, qualifying tournaments, and more that magic fans love. That's ambiguous, but it's also open ended. You know, we'll like, like filthy bathrooms and sitting around uh, complaining about stuff. Uh, convention center food. We do love that. Convention center food, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, bad lighting. <laughs> that will vary from location, but if you feel it, like it, the lighting is too good, I'm sure you, you can find bad lighting outside, especially yeah. at night. <clears throat> uh, That's when I wear my sunglasses. Smokers just outside of the, the front doors. You'll that have is that. a constant, yes. Yeah. Uh, so basically, you know, to be, I'm going to say to be generous about this, uh, this is a recognition that a Grand Prix weekend was more than just the Grand Prix, so let's actually call it something different. Yeah, so, and that's that's cool. And I'm fine with that. Yeah. Like, yeah. That makes it more appealing to me as someone who is more into magic for the social parts than lying to myself about the idea that I'm suddenly going to win a Grand Prix. Yeah. Also... Pro Tours are be, will be things that happen at Magic Fests. Right. I am all in on that. Me too. Because we've had several instances, Chewie, where it's like, hey, look, there's a Pro Tour that's actually close. Do you think they'd even let us in? What would happen if we went? These were ambiguous things. Yeah, so, 
years ago, for those of you that don't know, at some point years ago, they announced, all right, pro tours are going to not be open to the public anymore. They're going to be much smaller and more focused on the actual pro players. And at some point, they backed off of that, but didn't make an announcement about that. So we were always curious. Like, there was one, where was the one? Atlanta? One in DC. There's one in DC that we were going to go to. Yeah. And we, we both went, I don't. I don't know if we could actually go because we just don't know. Because, like I said, we remembered the close to the public announcement from years ago, but there was never a just kidding announcement after that. It was just sort of, you can go. Yeah. But I did see some uh, stuff on Twitter from somebody who said, hey, having Pro Tours at Magic Fest is cool because the Pro Tour in Richmond was kind of terrible. Yeah. For a spectator. Like, you could watch. Or you could leave. leave. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> These were your choices. So yeah. I think that's a good that's a good look. I, I like that. I think it also when they have their big pro tour type events, they'll have a lot more to do, both for people that are there for the other events and for the rest of Magic Fest, but also the coverage will be more exciting because when they're killing time, they can walk around and talk to people. Like they can do more like you would have at another major event. So, I'm all in on that. That sounds good. Yeah. So. And also, because they said they were doing more Pro Tour next year, this actually makes more sense. Uh, correct. So, the second bullet here, Channel Fireball Events has released the full Magic Fest schedule, which you can see at this, the link, or, you know, on the screen now, if you're watching this live or over on YouTube later. Uh, we've got the full schedule from January 4th in Oakland all the way to December 20th in Portland. There, There's... Hang on. There's something I need to go find. Real quick. <laughs> that doesn't need to be on camera. There it is. <laughs> okay. Uh, Willie Adel posted a tldr of today's announcement that oh, cover yeah. that has yeah, more I, if i'd known that's what you were looking for yeah I, I had that up in a tab ah it's well i can't get to the chat anyway so that's fine uh so we'll we'll come back to that um so here is like i said the the schedule there are less gps actually let's just get to it now Magic Fest will have three or four days. Blah, 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 blah. GP schedule. So, North America has lost four GPs. Down 28, down from 32. Uh, Europe has 11, down from 15. Japan has four, down from five. Uh, Asia Pacific has four, down from five. South America still has two. But only only two. Yeah. It says the number of Magic Fest weekends are roughly the same since we have only one double GP weekend in 2019. Oh. Okay, wait, what? I oh, mean, so the number sounds... of weekends are the same. Yeah. But instead it of like... It sounds like we're not doubling up on multiple events during the same weekend. Which was a thing that happened a lot this year. Yes. Because, like, for a while it was, well, we'll do the same format at each one. But now it sounds like they're just going to be one, which as someone spouting deck lists at you, I'm okay with. Yeah, and as, you know, with Channel Fireball being the one place that does them all, that makes sense, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so now instead of having one in North America and one in uh, Asia on the same weekend, now it'll just be one of them. Yep. So the number of weekends themselves are mostly the same, but the number of individual events in each region are less. Got yeah. it. Huh. So the other uh, big thing about the GP schedule, uh, only the formats of the first quarter from January to March are defined. 
for quarters two through four, formats are only constructed or limited or to be determined. Formats will be set 90 days before the start of each quarter. These events can be individual or team GPs. Well, if you like being informed what the format of an event was two and a half months out, don't worry. Now you're going to get three months. 90 days before the start of each quarter. Yeah, so, so we'll, that means I guess, you get find a out minimum... at the beginning of January what April through June are. Yeah, you get a minimum of three months and a maximum of, well, six months. Nearly six months, yeah. Okay. So do you think... How long do you think until they they miss that? <laughs> hmm. Uh, uh, do we second. say January was the first time this is supposed to announce? Yeah. yeah. 2019 it is. Okay. Yep. <laughs> um, It'd be interesting. So, people were talking about... Like, Central America and whatnot, but... I mean, South America gets two, but that didn't go down. In fact, that's the only reason that stayed the same, which didn't have is much to lose. Yeah, which is still probably not enough. Yeah. But I saw like a lot of people complaining about it, and I, am I missing something? Like, that's not the link I wanted. There's. Like, I know there there's something specific that's that's not here that people who, you know, pay attention to that sort of thing see that I don't. But I don't know what that is. So anybody in chat have anything on that? Lansdale, you were yeah. the one who, who mentioned it. I know or there's One no of the ones who mentioned it to me. Legacy in Q1, but that's not surprising. No, no, that's not surprising at all. Oh, hey, look, in the first quarter it does have, it does have it listed out. Modern, limited, 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 modern, standard. Wow, we don't get a standard GP until February. Foo. And then not another one until March, and that's it. So wow. essentially, like, two per set? They're, they're going the, the Star City route and focusing more on modern. I mean, so are the players. That's true. If we go by the numbers, that's fair. Yeah. All right, chat has failed me. Got it. Thanks, guys. Mm. So, that's a thing. Uh, they've also changed the price structure for GPs. Yeah. That's right. And this is, we were talking about this right before uh, the show. This is really bizarre. So, as it stands right now, the prize payout is based on attendance. Right? Right. And once you hit a certain number of people, you jump up to the second tier and the price payout increases. That is correct. So, uh, now we have four tiers, 35,000 that pays down to top 64, 50,000 that pays down to top 110. What? Uh, 65,000 that pays down to the top 175 and 80,000 that pays down to the top 225. So that's cool. But this says, yeah. we're replacing the previous two-tier main event attendance-based system with a four-tier system that will be locked in before registration for each GP opens. So on the one hand, you know exactly what it is when you sign up, so there are no surprises. True. On the other hand, if way more people show interest in an event than it's tiered at, you're stuck at it but we don't have the information to know what determines these tiers, whether it's based on like venue size and expectations or something else. Like we don't know. That's not, yeah. did they throw tier. darts? Like we, we literally don't know. Like we can guess and we certainly spend a lot of time guessing, but because we don't know, it's kind of disingenuous to tell you the guesses. Yeah. Well, I mean, those were our guesses. So yeah. like, yeah. <laughs> it's either darts or, event like venue size or expected attendance we, we I mean, don't know you pick the venue based on how many people you expect to show up so i imagine it's the same calculation they use for that but Could we don't be. know but now something i do like is it based on your feedback 
we've changed the prize pools to pay a higher percentage of players and make the main event payouts less top heavy than the previous system. So that's cool. Yeah. So it's more like you're you're more slightly more likely to get some money with a decent finish than yeah. not. So that's cool. I'm all for at an open event having the uh, payout be a little flatter. Yeah. It really sucks to go and play really, really well and still get nothing because you didn't have the ridiculously sick good run of making it over a two day event and going like X and four. That would suck. Yeah. I mean, it still sucks for the person in uh, 65th, but that's, you just can't help that. But yeah. So there you go. That's that's the price structure. There there's more though. There is more. It just keeps on giving. It really does. So let's let's close those. I'm going back to uh Willie Adel's uh things here. says watsi will give extra consideration to pto and independent events in regions with fewer magic fests what's pto uh professional tournament organizers i believe yeah i'm assuming that's not paid time off well i know it's not paid time off but like i didn't know if he did that on purpose pto because that that term does not appear professional tournament organizer there it is Let's say this that term doesn't appear anywhere else, but okay, there it is. All right, then. So apparently if you have in South America, for example, and you only have two magic fests, then they're going to uh, give extra consideration. I don't know what that means exactly. Possibly more qualifying slots? I mean... Maybe? probably in some way adjusting the compensation or rewards to offset limited availability. Like if you're only going to get two of these and you miss one, you've missed half your year's opportunities. So maybe they're trying to help a little. Maybe. I don't know. I don't know. Again, limited information available. And also this is Willie Adel's like thing that he wrote. <laughs> so, you know, yeah. there's that. Uh, all right. So now let's do the other, like the actual bigger news. How to qualify for the pro tour? Da, 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 da. Uh, wait. Is there anything else here? Oh yeah, Magic Fest can be either three or four days. That's neat. Hmm. Okay, yeah, that's that's everything there. So, qualifying for the Pro Tour. Uh, this is going to get funky. So, the first two Pro Tours of 2019, Cleveland and London, function like the current system, right? Right. Right. Yeah. After that, beginning with Pro Tour Dallas-Fort Worth, you get a confusing infographic. Yes. That doesn't make any sense. So you can qualify for the Pro Tour via the Grand Prix or via open events with one Pro Tour slot or via open events with multiple Pro Tour slots, which for some reason has its own little flag here, or invite-only events that have one PT slot. Yeah. So let's just skip. Let's let's get that obnoxious uh, infographic off the screen. So your Pro Club and Pro Tour finish-based invites. So if you are at a certain level in the pro club or a certain, or you finish high enough at a pro tour, you get invites, right? That That's not new. Yeah. Expected to look similar to the 2018 system. Yeah. Expect changes after 2019. So for now, continue yeah. as is, but keep an eye out next year. So then GPs will continue to qualify players for the pro tour. However, however, 
they may no longer qualify you for the next Pro Tour. Instead, GP tournaments will generally qualify you for a specific Pro Tour in the region in which the GP was held. So if you qualify generally. generally. So if you qualify through a GP in Europe, it will be for the next Pro Tour in Europe. Unless it's not. Unless it's not. But generally speaking, it will be. Uh, and then we have qualifying events. They're doing away with the preliminary Pro Tour qualifier, the PPTQ system. And instead, I could have sworn I read somewhere that this would work more like the old PTQ system. Maybe that was in... Uh, that, they'll they'll say that in, as you get further. That's in Willie Adel's document. Oh, that's in Willie Adel's document. Oh, okay. Yeah. Which I, I assume, since there is slightly more information in this document, I assume that they said more about this on the stream. On the stream, yeah. They there's, about there's less in, in the actual article, I guess. Right, but none of us saw that. We just saw the yeah. written article. So, we're doing away with PPTQs. Instead, qualifying events will provide direct qualification of one or more players to the Pro Tour, like PTQs. That thing that I top aided once, and Bill top Ford Me once. Too. <laughs> uh, and Clues eight. judged once. And Clues and judged did. when, when I uh, top aided. I did. Uh, each qualifier will specify the Pro Tour it feeds. Does this sound familiar? It should. Because this is how old PTQs worked. Like, you were yeah. going to, like, a Cleveland qualifier. A, a Cleveland PTQ. Yeah. Uh, so, there will be two types of qualifying events. Open qualification events. That will be open, like, PTQs. The qualification yeah. events held at Magic Fests will be open. So, if there is a qualifying event, I really hate that term, and I wish... Uh, if there's a PTQ, I'm just going to call it that, because it's what it is. If there's a PTQ at a Magic Fest, it's an open PTQ, and you can just sign up for it like it was a PTQ. And it yeah. appears, based on, again, on Willie Idol's document, that there will be one open qualifier per day of a Magic Fest. Do, 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 do. What Magic Fest right will here. have one of these open qualifiers per day. Cool. So yeah, if there if it's a three day Magic Fest, then you got three chances. That's cool. Right. Okay. So then we have invite only qualifying events. Unlike the PTQ system of old, these events will use invite thresholds, specific metrics, and levels for invitations to be released later. And will be offered by professional tournament organizers and WPN member stores, blah, 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 blah. So these are, uh, these are like a, a cross between old PTQs and our PTQs. Because our PTQs yeah. would have been this, the invite only. You got that invite by winning a PPTQ. Yeah. Right. But now it's... It's satisfy some most... criteria <laughs> we don't know what that is yet yeah, yeah it is most likely going to tie towards something that they can measure in a system which is why they say specific metrics and levels they don't say this is planeswalker points or this is pro points or anything else we don't know what but it will probably be something that would give you an incentive to grind things yeah so yeah that's that's pretty big they're going to roll out the pilot program the first part of 2019 to get this going. Uh, there's there's actually one more thing that can qualify you that we haven't talked about. What's that? At, at least according to, to Willie Idol's document. Oh. Uh, Taking the heart of a pro player and eating it to gain their power. Yes, there can be only one. Uh, professional events. This is sort of new. I'm, I'm quoting here from uh, from this document. Uh, best-in-class WPN stores and professional tournament organizers will be able to organize events or a series of events culminating in a final awarding PT slots. Yes, these events can award more than one PT invite in some cases. Details about these events in the future. So, that... so this isn't an invite only, and this isn't like the open ones that are at Magic Fests. Well, this these is... are open uh, ones at the these store are opens, level not at magic fest right these yeah. are opens not at the magic fest and it may be a single event it may be a series of events so it's not that this is another way to qualify it's that this is more open events 
Yeah, like yeah. when I read this earlier, I read it incorrectly because under the bullet for open, it says qualification events held at Magic Fest will be open. And I took that to mean that they were all there, but that's not actually what it says. Yeah, yeah. So this is sort of clarifying other places where you could encounter that. Yeah. But it to me, it reads like you could see that the SCG tour culminates in the SCG Invitational, which also awards pro tour slots. That, I mean, that would... That could be a thing. That could be a thing. We're definitely not saying it is a thing. Yeah, we're yeah. not saying it is, but this reads like it could allow for that sort of thing. Right. Yeah. And we'll find out someday when they tell us. Yes, there will come a day in the future when we'll know. This is not that day. It will yeah. likely be a so Tuesday. On, on Magic Online, no changes. Everything's pretty much the same. Yep. Whatever. And so before, if you want a PPTQ... You got the invite to the regional PTQ that that fed into, and that was it. Yep. So if you couldn't do that, you were screwed. But now, under the new system, players can play in any number of tournaments for which they are qualified until they qualify for the Pro Tour. Once you get that qualification for the Pro Tour, you have to stop, which is the same as it is now. Yes. So before, once you, you know, won your PPTQ... You were pretty much out until the RPTQ, and then you had that one tournament chance to do it, which, since those were quarterly, that was it for your chances. Whereas now, theoretically, you don't place in your, you know, open, we're going to call it a PTQ. Well, there will probably be another one at some point in the future, hopefully before the next RTPQ, the letters, would be. So you may get more opportunities is the takeaway assuming you're in an environment where there are more than one of these a quarter so yeah that is a plus and a step back towards the world before pvdqs yeah it it's a little weird especially for the three of us who don't have any sort of interest in this side of magic this is all just words and letters mm -hmm. so that's why i'm trying to be very clear <laughs> So let's go back to Willie Adel's thing here. Uh, yeah. Pro levels are going to be different in 2020. And it they're going to make the, the changes. They'll announce the changes later. The qualification system based on PT finishes or pro level won't change in the 2018-2019 season. So wait, is that the new one that is like quarterly? Or the one bef that, that was before? I don't know. Even I know that the whole quarterly changing uh, pro level system was confusing and stupid. Yeah. I think what they're saying is that if you're already going through the processes for the announced PTs for next year, and, you know, there are things that you're able to qualify for now, then nothing is changing. But... Well, no, this is the... the yeah, the... Oh, Okay. This is the based on pro levels. Never mind. Yeah. So that's not changing on you in the middle of it. But as with everything else, pay attention. There will probably be more 80% written articles to tell you 70% of what you need to know. Like it's... This is a bunch of stuff, especially for people that are interested in uh, going to the Pro Tour. This is all massive because this is all drastically different except for magic online <laughs> right yeah and, and keep in mind they say that 2019 is a transition year towards something better so yeah we should expect 2020 to be even more different and this is just dealing with that transition so and now that we've spent an this hour out, explaining it and parts of it are in the future you still only know some of it yeah. Isn't isn't that great? Communication. What is it? And how do we kill it? <laughs> this this way. I was say, this we, oh, okay. we have killed communication. Let's not worry about that. Does that mean I lose my degree? I mean uh, I haven't maybe. been using it. Freight freight so. Eh. Fine. So the I'm link not to the first degree that doesn't work anymore. But... The link to both the official uh, article and to Willie Adel's 
uh, TLDR thing uh, will be in the show notes for those of you that want to read it all specifically. Uh, yeah. So, I guess I guess that's it. I think that might I think be. So. It. I guess we do have to point out that uh, real quick, uh, Dan Ward. If you'll remember from Pro Tour 25th anniversary, the guy who tried, who got disqualified for trying to sh- do something shady with a meddling mage against Chris Pakula, <laughs> uh, the meddling mage. He was recently handed a six-month ban, and people are losing their minds. Now, a thing that happens now is that the the ban, you know, the the the, the uh, not 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 ban that involves turn. What's the word? The uh, turn them the, the eligibility. What's the word I'm looking for? Damn it! I don't know. I'm sorry. Oh well, he was he was banned from competitive play for six months. Now it doesn't say what he was banned for, because they don't say that anymore. They no. haven't for a very long time. So this is one of those calm down, put your torches and pitchforks down general magic public we don't know what he was banned for we don't know if he was banned as a uh uh a result of the dq at the pro tour we don't know no one knows except for him and the people who handled the banning right so the investigations committee this is not the one public yeah. information yeah so if you say you only get six months for cheating at the pro tour you don't know that that's what he got banned for you, you just don't so Calm down. Okay? Thank you. Assault with a marine. <laughs> you don't know. <laughs> uh, uh, let's see. So now I think we're actually done, right? For this I quick... Think we're done. I think so. Um, I will throw out there just for the, like, maybe two people that care about this. Um, this is the last week to redeem Dominaria cards in Magic Online. Oh. So you might want to do that if you're sitting on them and trying to convert them into paper. That is good to know. They don't, like, sit around waiting for redemption forever anymore. So you'll want to get on that if you have them and are planning to redeem. Good to know. Yeah. All right. So, reminder, no Monday Night Magic next week because I won't be here. Correct. So we'll pick up whatever happens the week after. There's a Star City event. The team, I think it's team constructed. We will talk to you about what post-rotation standard looks like, maybe. Yeah, yeah. Presumably that will have happened. Yeah, because there is, if it's the team trios this weekend for Star City, which I think it is, that means there will be a Legacy Modern and Limited and uh, uh, Standard Classic. Yes. So... We will talk about that, but so you know when you sign on Monday night or Tuesday, we are not there to give you our bad understanding of what standard looks like. That will take another week. Yes. So, in the meantime, go listen to the pre-release episode of The Mana Pool. We took our the handy-dandy digital recorder to the pre-release and... The one that looks like a taser? Uh, well, now it looks like a taser. It, it looks like a 70s basketball player. Oh, nice. Yeah. Nice. Because I, I found a like a foam ball thing and put it on top of it to help with the wind noise. Sure. I don't know if it did, but it looks cute. Aw. If if you take this off, yeah, it looks like a taser or a lighter. Apparently, people have like weird the, looking lighters. Afro. Yeah, I kind of I kind of like the afro look though. I'll put that back on. Yeah. So how about uh, we wrap this up then, gentlemen? Cool. All right. All right, um, you can find me on Twitter at SqueeGoblinAbob. There's no Iron Goblin because, let's be real, that guy wasn't going to show up on a Thursday. Um, right? Where? Is that right? We can't even right. get him on the mana pool anymore. No, it's weird. Um, but yeah, past that, um, <laughs> I'm not currently watching Venom, and I know none of you are either, so what, <laughs> what are the odds of Venom working out? Um I, I will say, though, I watched the trailer for the Spider-Verse thing, the second trailer they put out earlier this week, and that looks like a lot of fun. So I will watch 
an animated movie with, you know, spider ham in it. And you probably should too. Right. So, yeah. All right, then. That's all my nonsense. Go get them clues. All right. You can find me on Twitter. I am at Lock Luze, spelled just like it is in the show notes. Go ahead, Chewy. <laughs> wow, that was quick. Clues oh, was a big episode. I'm just wrapping it up, man. He was deep dinner. I, I do want to eat dinner. It's yeah, true. Yeah, I do too. So, uh, like I said, I will be on vacation. Don't worry. There is a, uh, a large amount of YouTube content that will be going up while I'm gone. So, don't don't worry about that. I've got Hearthstone and Rogue Legacy and The Walking Dead and a lot of all of those going yeah. up. Because I finally finished Rogue Legacy on stream a while back and I've been chopping it up putting it on uh, YouTube. So that's finally now you're ready be... for Rogue Vantage. Uh I hate you. You should. <laughs> it's justified. But yeah, the next chapter of The Walking Dead, all five of those episodes are going out every day that a Walking Dead video goes up. There's another video that will go up with it because nobody watches those, so <laughs> I'm going to pretend that this was an intentional syncing up with the new season starting this weekend. Oh, is the is that show still going? Yeah, it's not allowed to die get it <laughs> because zombies it's running out of original characters but it's still on oh well there you go then uh but yeah that's all going well while, while i'll be gone so you will get plenty of youtube content from me no streams obviously because i won't i won't be here hmm but yeah that is it for me if you want to get in touch with me, the easiest way to do that is on Twitter at the Mana Pool. You can, of course, join the. Hello. And not so silent Bob threw a bit just to get his name out there. And I fell for it. Did. Thank, like thanks for the. Food. Thanks for the penny. I really need to up that uh, <laughs> notification <laughs> minimum. Yeah, probably a good idea. But anyway, anyway, um. That completely threw me off. Damn it, Bob. Manipool, Manipool, Manipool. Manipool, Manipool. What was I doing? Oh, right. Patreon. You can totally uh, join the Manipool Discord server where there are a bunch of us there. We're, we're just just shy of 100 people. So feel free to go in and push us over that, that three-digit minimum or three-digit yeah. threshold. There we go. Where we have channels for Magic and Hearthstone and Eternal and uh, gaming in general and all kinds of stuff overwatch there's a channel no yeah yeah all kinds of good stuff so feel free to go, go join about the cool uh, halloween skins you get next week oh man i'm looking forward to seeing more of those i think halloween skins are usually my favorite they're usually the best yeah but if you want to help support what i do with all of this uh insane amount of content creation the best way to do that the most direct way to do that is to become a lifeguard on Patreon has logged me out for some reason. That's awkward. That'll teach you. Uh, become a lifeguard on patreon.com slash the mana pool where lifeguards of the different tiers, rarities, get the appropriately colored uh, name in the mana pool discord server. So uncommons are silver, golds are, or rares are gold. Mythics are uh, that mythic orange color. Cheeto. No, I would not eat a Cheeto that color. You shouldn't. And they make those. They're the spicy ones. Yeah, don't and do I it. Like, I like spicy stuff, but those weren't good. Anyway, anyway. <laughs> uh, uncommon lifeguards get early access to YouTube videos, in, in which case they've got a crap load of access to YouTube videos because videos for the next week and a half are all up <laughs> on patreon so <laughs> have a party Woo! and they also get early access to the mana pool which they also have access to that because i got it done earlier today uh i saw that what was that early access that's the uncommons the rare lifeguards get all of the early access stuff and access to the odds and ends all the stuff recorded before and after both monday night magic and the mana pool that is uncensored and us 
planning the show and talking about other nonsense and uh, those are the two things really planning the show and talking about other nonsense yeah and the mythic lifeguards get the early stuff the odds and ends and the shout out on both podcasts and their name on the end screen for all of the YouTube videos so I would like to thank the following mythic lifeguards Kim Ho, Andrew Hunt, Al, Lance Delicious, Team U Hill is Are You, Connor Kennedy, John Morris, Jeff Spencer, Stuart Slaw, PJ McMullen, Bosco Bertain, Casey, Fayan Says, Danny Liao, Jason Doan, Cody Buckowing, Jake Jansons, Jason Kaus, Gothic Man, Brian DeLucci, Stark Maximum, Keith Moody, John Parker, Violet Moon, Dan Holm, Bartle, Mike Millerburn, and the Beast Father, Aaron Goodwine. Holy crap. You're getting better at somehow doing that without breathing. Oh, and, and, and destroying my throat. So, Go do it. this has been an emergency recording of Monday Night Magic, number 626. Thanks, Wizards, for making me do just a little bit more work before I go on vacation. Damn Not it. Not even supposed to be here today. Not even supposed to be here today. <laughs> Dude, when I woke up this morning, all I had to do was I'd put the episode together, the Maniple episode. And I was just going to post it, make the video, post it, get everything scheduled. And I was done for the day and I could focus on laundry and packing and all that stuff. And then this happened and I went, oh God, we're not going to talk about that for so long. And Bill goes, should we record tonight? And I'm like, yes. <laughs> <laughs> ruin everything. Just ruin everything. But anyway, so thank you all that showed up for this emergency uh, live stream. Uh, we really appreciate it. And thank you all so much for listening. And yeah, we're going to be gone now. So, go play some magic. I screwed that in ending all up, and I don't even care. I'm not even supposed to be here today. I watched Clerks last night, too. That's the Ooh, funny part. Nice. <laughs>